Thank you so much, Ms. Wapni, for the wonderful session. Next, we have uh, Dr. Sangeeta Bhatia. She is a renowned face in the world of psychology who is serving as a senior research fellow, ICSSR, and associate professor in the Department of Psychology, Gargi, Uni Gargi College, University of Delhi. I welcome you, ma'am. Good morning, good afternoon, Namaskar, and uh, thank you very much for uh, inviting me, uh, Dr. Ankit Bhargav, and my congratulations to you and to your team for organizing the first ever, first ever e-conference, international e-conference, in fact, on women's mental and physical health, 2021. In fact, uh, when you look at these terms, mental health, women, I think it itself comes to our mind that how important it is for us to be talking about these issues at any time, every time, and any time is a good. So thank you, Dr. Bhagram, and to Abbas, uh, Abhyas, I should say, I'm sorry, for giving us this opportunity to be able to talk to one another, to learn from one another, and to understand that how can we make women's health more wholesome, more holistic, more optimum, so that each one of us can experience the well-being as we move forward. So without taking much of your time, further time in thanking you once more, I start with my presentation. I will be sharing my screen. And as you understand that my topic is really very uh, varied. It is very vast. And when we start looking at uh, issues such as mental health, such as in terms of uh, personal growth, in terms of what exactly can we do to improve our mental health? It seems that we can kind of go on for a long time. Uh, but being a pro, you know, academician in psychology, we tend to talk a lot about research, but being from applied psychology also gives me some kind of more passion and an interest that whatever theoretical knowledge that we have obtained, that we have shared in our past uh, careers, in being in the profession, can be shared a little bit of our learnings that would help us to move towards uh, understanding what health should be, ought to be, to be able to self-reflect what my health is and how can I really maintain it, manage it, regulate it, optimize it, or even make it better. So the word initiative itself implies for us something that we can take in our hands. So be it personal growth, professional growth, the word here is to focus on is growth, a change, a change towards betterment, a change towards the next step, a change towards just about movement that actually enhances maybe from the state that we want is the state one would want to be. Mental health is something we know as, for example, even though we're using the term mental health here, I'm using it separately. I would rather just have the term health because WHO itself implies that health incorporates both physical health as well as mental health. Can we feel empowered once we have control over our health? Once I understand what my health is really about, can I actually judge or take a call on my own decisions of my own choosing to change, to alter, to modify the situation, the events, the experiences to be who I am as a woman. So continuing, I would like to then begin by saying, what really is mental health? There are definitions, there are, uh, you know, uh, I'm team, you could say scientific literature is replete with operationalization of the term. I just present a few uh, attributes here. The attributes in terms of some kind of capacities or abilities that actually allow us to feel something. 
what could that be something be for example i have the ability to learn when i say i have the ability to learn then am i eager to learn new skills do i get joy in engaging with people do i feel good about myself or is my daily life more dominant with negative emotions rather than positive emotions the balance so all of us are going through our life's journeys not in terms of as a positive end only all the time feeling positive emotions is actually uh, unrealistic and we choose to kind of find that middle ground where we restore ourselves where we allow us to experience negative emotions and constantly endeavor constantly endeavor and to understand why i am feeling what i am and whether i can choose to navigate that state to a positive one so mental health is merely not really it's this different from mental illness a diagnosis so as to say a pathology with clear cut symptoms and a diagnosis by a professional mental health can be understood in terms of being poorer or low on mental health continuum being optimal being very good uh, and a scale of mental health each one of us constantly moves from the or different prior or you know you could say place or different points of the mental health continuum so it's a whole range at one point in time in one day we can experience different kind of emotions what really is our treasure what really is forms the basis research has the longitudinal study on happiness for more than 50 years by the harvard researchers they showed social capital or the ability to engage with social uh, relationships having healthy relationships make us feel uh, when we spend quality time with friends and family they can actually give us a sense of feeling good about ourselves a sense of optimism as well as we can kind of uh, uh, the insecurities we might feel in our lives we can basically cope well when we have a good support system so mental health is like you could say a buffet of ingredients all these ingredients many of them are most of them are learned so when we say learned it is is it the nurturing environment is it the society is it my own capabilities so we can as we move along we would rather we would like you to understand and to take this these next uh you know few minutes with me that how is it that uh, we can you know bring change if we really reflect on that we need to bring about change so as soon as we look at bringing about change what comes to mind is empowerment so when we look at the word empowerment it itself inherently has the term of power within it how do i know whether i am empowered or not so we look i will look at it in terms of a looking glass self a mirror something by which i say i am a mother i am a wife i am a career woman i am a daughter i am a daughter in law so we are all a juxtaposition of so many of these social roles roles but when we look at it ourselves as just being a woman or just being a human being then all these become small positioned concepts or constructs within the larger self of what defines me to put it simply to put it simply i have certain wants and needs all of us have a limited time within us how much of a choice do i can i exercise in terms of basically what i really want to do how much of something that i want to do with whom do i want to spend my time with so when i start looking at all these things do i feel constrained do i feel marginalized in a larger scheme of things there is the uh, thing that the term that we hear glass ceiling so we say that women in corporate or any career they do we can come across a glass ceiling which is a kind of a barrier which you can see through want to aspire but not being able to attain 
because of that certain distinction which is keeping me away or apart from that position because I am a woman. So my gender, is my gender empowering enough? Is it disempowering? We'll come to that in a bit. But the five key areas that have been thought to be really, you know, matter where exactly empowerment is really critical, according to Mandel, he says all the five domain, domains, starting from the broader one, which we can say social, the social domain continues to be influenced by the political. Political is in terms of the rights, our responsibilities, the citizen accorded rights. Do we have different opportunities privileges or equal opportunities as compared to the males or men and women. So educational opportunity, education is empowering. It, give, it opens up a world of opportunities. It makes us economically self-sufficient if we acquire enough of a learning so as to be able to contribute meaningful, meaningfully to an organization, to a corporate, to an NGO maybe. But this, all these put together actually impinge upon our psychological well-being. Uh, my state of uh, you know, perception of uh, what exactly is my subjective wellness, so as to say, when I go out to work, when I, how, what are the safe spaces for me? Is my home a safe space too, really? How am I uh, respected or treated within my own four walls by the, fam by the family members whom I live with? So my cultural norms that surround me, that guide the behavior of others towards me, the discourses that guide my parenting skills, all of these put together are the key areas where we say that in each of the engagement with my multiple domains will really determine if I'm empowered or not, or how empowered I am. So here I'd like to really mention that it's not that there is nothing being done, being done about empowerment. What am I talking about? Does it even exist? Of course, we have our very own, if you could go to Ministry of Women and Child Development, we have the national policy for the empowerment of women, which actually has been passed in 2001. So the principle of gender equality has really been emphasized by the Indian constitution in its preamble through fundamental rights, fundamental duties and directive principles. So it grants equal, you could say, it grants equality to women. It in fact empowers the state to take into consideration those ways, means, strategies and steps which actually provide empowerment to women through education, through allowing opportunities, as well as strengthening legal systems, which actually in terms of it, there's a violation or violence against women, those really ought to be looked at and there are systems in place. So mainstreaming of gender perspective, mainstreaming, that is not really conversations in terms of just the educational academia or the other portals uh, where people come together, but also in terms of expanding economy. So the organizational sector where we largely have women working in the unorganized sector. So what about them? Can micro credit look into the opportunities of economic you know, you could say security, economic opportunity. Women are in agriculture. Women work in support services, health workers, and we know exactly how much they have contributed to our safety, security, and health in our last, term, especially the pandemic. What about their own health? So women's health, because um, maternal mortality and infant mortality have continued to be uh, you know, in terms of uh, visible, tangible policies that something really needs to be done and is being done successfully. By way of nutrition, many majority, all the surveys show this, majority of the girls 
uh, you know, puberty, who have attained puberty, be it in religious or city, continue to be anemic. And we know that anemia is significantly negatively related to so many of the other ways which actually, actually demean uh, and devalue the daily quality of life and aspirations that a woman can bring forth otherwise in being in better health. So there are rights of the girl, child, and there are action plans. Uh, but when I say, when I'm talking about the constitution, when I'm talking about the rights, yes, we do know that the cognizance at the political level is there, the intent is there, the means and strategies and plans of actions are there. So what am I going to be talking about? My focus, I, like I said, can I, at my own personal initiative, also empower myself? Can I feed into the political system that is allowing me some directive and some, you know, some, you could say, resources already in place through policies? Can I actually, uh, you know, engage with those as a advocate as an advocacy person so that I see the ones who don't have access to some kind of resources those are available to them but the change is going to start with oneself with me if I don't feel self-efficacious enough if I'm not aware what are my rights and responsibilities if I am uh, laden or overburdened with restrictions or constrictions that don't allow me to fulfill my potential, then all these actually uh, policies are meaningless. I will not really be utilizing them. I won't be even be aware of them. So I have to also reach out in equal partnership to be able to contribute to the larger socio-economic political scenario. And when I talk about all these aspects so how what is it exactly are there three components which really determine that empowerment should be based on some of these four beliefs and which is i should skill am i aware what are, what are my strengths what are my weakness what are my dreams my dream might have been to be a teacher or maybe a pilot when i was growing up so do i really have access to developing the necessary skills do i even am i allowed to make that choice do my parents guide me encourage me inspire me that yes whether you want to be a pilot or, a, or an architect or a mathematician, yes, you might. And because once we understand what the skill really is, we actually can undertake an action. It, taking action really means it can start from changing our thoughts. It can start from changing my perception. It can start from I cannot do or why should I do or I will not be able to do to maximizing my perception to the positive continuum and saying let me give it a try yes i can do this i mean what is the way so the action really is changing one's own perception and thoughts because behavior can only follow if the thoughts have to be changed first thoughts can only change if we have self-reflexivity if we kind of introspect in terms of what and how much and qualitatively what you want to change in your daily lives. So this belief actually, uh, the core, uh, I would say, ingredient is something which you would say would give me self-confidence that yes, that I am. So empowering belief, the first thought that I would urge each one of us to really have is I am responsible for my happiness. So the responsible word itself comes from the term responsibility, ability to give a response. So what ability do I want? What kind of responses do I want to my own uh, daily life, to my loved ones, to my career, to my object, to the time that I have at hand? I want to be able to you know, uh, undertake all my daily activities in a way which are so meaningful so as for me to be able to say that I am happy. So this, I hope that these 10 minutes have convinced you enough that 
Empowering beliefs can lead us to better mental health and better mental health allows us, the, actually gives us the energy, the courage, the strength, the self-efficaciousness to be able to be empowered. It needs something more. It needs an initiative. It means that once I have, I'm self-aware, there are thoughts of uh, can-do attitude, what more should I be doing to translate into a more quality of life? I also need to think besides that, do I feel disempowered? And in which domain of my life? Is it that the social structure is not allowing me to kind of continue with my job? Does it give me enough incentives? Does it give me, uh, you could say, uh, you know, even maternity leave or does, does there a crash or a childcare center because I'm a homemaker and a career woman where I have the option of either flexi uh, flexible time schedule or I can bring in my child close by where I do not have to commute long distances or maybe leave the child at home if there is no Hell. So the levels, of, if I feel disempowered, you can see in the small box right there on the screen that I might feel in some situations helpless. I'm transferred out of maybe the city. I'm getting a promotion, but it means uprooting the stability of maybe my spouse's job or the children who are going to a certain school. What choices? Do I have a choice? Do I take a choice? Do I let the promotion go? But I work towards maintaining the stable routine of our daily lives because I reach out even to the well-being of the others and not inherently think of my career growth. So it's not about being selfless or selfish or self-centered. It means that we as human beings, especially as a woman, we are not only thinking about the self-centric aspect of I and me, because our, our identities actually are linked and synchronous with all the others to whom we may, may be a caregiver, a support system, or merely a companion. So if we uh, you know, feel maybe blame that my child has not done well in the exam because I was not available, I was spending too much time away from my home, etc. What does it make me feel? These aspects, these concerns can actually have an impact on the emotional level, making me feel sad, making me feel, uh, you could say, uh, you know, uh, pessimistic, making me feel my losing, making me lose my sleep. And then the psychological impact of maybe alienation or loneliness, a prolonged aspect of negative states can actually lead to either depressive symptoms or to depression. In fact, when we look at psychological, it also implies that the physical health can take a beating. We do know that mind and body are inextricably linked together. And negative emotions mean, the stress means demanding, putting demands on the body by, ex excuse me, by secreting higher stress hormones such as cortisol and these hormones are going to probably not most likely mess up with one's blood pressure and diabetes and so on and so forth. So when somebody says if one is feeling low or sad or tired it's all in the head, it's all in the mind. That is something of equal importance if it's all in the body because mind and body are constantly communicating with one another as not two separate entities but as one and a healthy body allows us the energy and the vibe to do our work well and the satisfaction of the contentment the reward the happiness the pleasure the pride of attaining your aspirations 
makes the gives the body the extra energy of health of uh, eating well sleeping well uh, meeting people having the energy to do things that you enjoy and in fact at the marginalization we do know that in gender studies in the so called genderization if i may use the term the social margins of where women are bounded or where they look are located in many cultures can really be disempowering in spite of the rights or the privileges that are accorded to many we are we cannot really generalize that each and every woman woman wherever she is located has access are available all the resources equally amongst women between men and women so disempowerment is something which is inherently can already be deep rooted in our Uh, when a woman, when we're growing up as a woman, maybe as a child, I was not permitted to maybe not go out often, or maybe you know wear certain clothes, maybe not choose the option of an education, of a degree, of a coursework. Maybe I was married. off at an earlier age i lost out on my childhood on my adolescent years there can be so many ways and if i was working after marriage there could be certain kind of uh, you know this again uh, you know a, a kind of an understanding that no you will not work after the mar- after your marriage you will look after the family are these all this empowering i would think so i would urge you to think that do you feel these are this empowering do you have any one of you experience such kind of narratives and discourses amongst you your group of friends and women or within your family if you have i would say that many of us would probably have at some point and some level or the other it behooves that our mental health actually would be getting impacted and as we go on to our life's journeys not to be able to look back at regret at any point in time that i could not do this or i was not permitted to let us just find ways how can we make and exercise those choices so that we can drop the dis the dis and leave the empowerment for us to be able to continue with so what am i saying let's take the initiative the initiative for personal growth the initiative to utilize what the constitution of india offers us through opportunities through resources let us be the ones maybe because today we are using technology we speaking english language we are kind of in a space where we have these resources available to us can we utilize them to not only for self growth but to reach out to those marginalized who do not have equal opportunities as us who are not equally privileged and can we make a difference to another girl child or to another women's life how can we do that uh, there is a personal growth uh, scale, initiative scale that i have just uh, it's a nine item scale actually standardized but i have actually just used three or four items uh, because i have uh, not really used it in terms of data collection here that we look at some questions such as that i have a good idea of where i'm headed in life i know what i need to actually do to get started get started to what to whatever the objective you have in your life at the moment so what are we looking at we are looking at as reflexivity as a sense of self as myself as a psychological agent having an agency having an agency and that can come with if i have the motivation that is based on intrinsic value we yes as humans as it's a universal understanding in sense act as extrinsic motivation to power us on to achieve and therefore to go on to the next level or to the next step but if by chance there are barriers if there is some kind of missed opportunity and if i failed in a little way 
or at some point in my endeavor, does it mean that I lose motivation? Intrinsic motivation means that I have internalized my core values and my beliefs and I am willing, I'm willing to take the continue with whatever it takes. So taking mindful actions, the willingness, the intent, these are important aspects and elements if I want of any initiative for that matter. It's not only women centric, but what I'm saying is that we have to be able to do go a little bit extra miles for our own sake to take L'Oreal's tagline, if I may say so, because we are worth it. So uh, how should we go about that? If I have a personal goal, of me becoming, you could say, of starting my own NGO. And I need to be specific NGO. There are so many NGOs. What does it take to start? Do you need only money? Do you need space? Do you need government permissions? Or what does it take for an NGO to even start, evolve? And what can your role be? It would be a good idea to start by volunteering at an NGO to be able to kind of understand their experiential learning to being there in terms of action oriented researchers by looking at the paradigms and the objectives and how manpower is used as a resource. How are the what is the target? Uh, you know, population for whom the organization is actually working. So we need to be very clear and to be very concrete that yes, I want to work with me NGOs in the area of field for women, right? But what is it their nutrition? Is it to do with something to do with skilling them in literacy, offering them literacy? Is it to do with the ones who have special needs? Is it the ones who are older and elder who have actually been caregivers all their lives? Now, what about them? So we need to be very clear and these have to be inherently, we'll come across this again next, that they have to, uh, you know, in tandem with our own values. In our own, for our own values. So, first, so what opportunities can I get? Do I want? So, if I want to work in NGOs, mostly all NGOs will allow you to volunteer. Time is the most precious resource that you can offer and extend yourself to the community. And if my strengths are, can I engage, uh, for example, CSR programs, corporate social responsibility programs, they normally have some funds allocated to and become anchored and, uh, you know, associated with organizations. Am I good at networking or am I good in terms of gov understanding government policies that for getting these uh, resources or the sanctions, I would work there? Or is it I just want to work within the space of human interface with the target population? And are there any opposing factors? For example, you want to be able to work with women or the older women. Do you go to old age homes or the health age homes? Do you go to ashrams? Where might you actually be looking for? So in a place, urban centers, online there are the lists etc of all the ngos listed and it is just for us to be able to choose that whether i go opposing factor uh, it could be that somebody or someone says or you think will i be able to go how much time should i spend is it all right for me to go and work these are all questions at times that we just inflict on ourselves but we have to be able to be smart. We have to be able to be smart because we are taking the initiative for personal growth. We are working towards enhancing or preserving our mental health. We really want to be empowered by choosing and being responsible for my own well-being. So let's take a small example. What are smart goals really? So if I have really wanted to maybe write a book, which I actually want to from a long time. So I think when I'm going to talk about this, I'm also hearing myself speak and I might motivate myself to that. Yes, I need to do these and have a print out of this and keep it in front of me to see it 
on my wall every morning when I wake up and before I go to bed at night. So again, the same thing. I want to write a book on what? So as an academician in psychology, psychology is a vast field. So if my interest has been in lifespan development, what age group should I is of more interest to me is it child development or is it the adolescent or is it just any which i may pick up so it's the what really is probably narrowing down because the more specific like we had talked in the earlier uh, slide also that being concrete means being clear being clear means that you can take the first because you know the direction in which you should be able to take that step so uh, is it measurable so let me also take the example here of many of us go through the stage at one point or the other or know a friend or family wanting to lose weight specific is it for an upcoming event or a wedding that we just want to lose weight to look our best and to wear certain dresses of course or is it a lifestyle change because we do know that doctors talk to us and tell us so much now more about how important it is to be in a health on a healthy weight and it's not only for the older years for women starting from like i said anemia can really really uh, you know, put down one's health uh, because of inadequate diet and then osteoporosis, the changes of bones. So am I wanting to lose weight through exercise because of this event coming up? Then it's just going to be a short term goal. If it's a lifestyle change, I want something which becomes a part of my daily life and I can continue uh, to reap the benefits of that practice. So what would be measurable for writing a book? For a book, it could be, it should have six chapters or at least eight to 10 chapters, which could be 50K words. And if it is of a goal of a weight loss, it could be that my healthy BMI, I want around 20 to 21. So it, which implies if I lose around five to 10 pounds, I am going to be there. So you have a certain figure of value of value in this. So it's just not what I want to lose weight. No, I want to lose this much of weight. Is it attainable and how? So for the uh, writing book part, writing a page or a paragraph, at least something every other day. And when I'm looking at exercise as an example, it really means what I'm going to do. Am I only, do I need a gym membership? Research all over the world shows that the maximum number of gym memberships are applied for during the new year resolutions and they all peter out by another three months and in six months they don't even exist there somewhere at the back of a cupboard, the gym dress, etc. So what is it that doesn't make it sustainable? So attainable implies some bit built in program in terms of your own exercise like walking or maybe joining a yoga class in the neighborhood if you cannot go or drive somewhere and even maybe you have a uh, you know exercise programs being live streamed or with your friends so to look at ways and of course with dietary changes now only exercising and indulging in certain foods is not really going to cut it so we do know that attainable implies both the nutrition end as well as the exercise end. So the relevance, we, do we find a publisher to write a book? I could start by writing blogs. I could start by sending articles to newspapers. I could look at some magazines who have theme-based uh, articles, etc. Get some feedback, asking them that what is it relevant for a journal, a newspaper, or the book? Is it for the popular read? Is it in terms of uh, you know, uh, academic understanding for students' edition, or would it be something for parents? and generally families are available at airport windows and malls and stores. So uh, the relevance of it really also implies that if I'm doing exercise because of a chronic illness, I'm also allowing the physician to be updated through me that 
I'm not stopping medication even though I'm losing weight. So being relevant to my, my actions are relevant to my a goal and my end point. So a time frame is very important. It's smart because we know we have limited time in terms of not today, not 24 hours or a week of seven days or a year of 12 months, but a time so that we fulfill our goal. A time so that what we aspired for, we achieve it. A time for what we dreamt of, we accomplish. So if we so if we can visualize that end and we can see ourselves happy and proud and rewarded by self-contentment and see our potential being realized, we want to see uh, achieving that. So time is inherent in terms of to be able to reach that stage, we need to really be smart. So we can break up our objectives and by having a clarity in trying to have calling them smart goals, but in fact, trying to be smart. But just having goals, is that enough? We need to also understand there can be some strategies because having a goal, writing a book or exercising or starting an NGO or continuing with your education, these are more likely to be achieved or giving you satisfaction if they align with your own values. So you want to help, you want to reach out to humanity, you can, or you have a corporate job, you may want to maybe leave and use seed money to start your own organization in terms of, for example, like SEVA and, you know, where you have on similar lines, uh, you know, women, you give opportunities to other women not so privileged and utilize maybe their craft before Diwali or give them skills in what is required or provide them with some kind of materials to make cards, etc. So aligning your goals with values also helps us to talk about it enthusiastically when we share it when we share our goals with people significant people in our lives with people who actually matter to us so three to five they could be colleagues they could be friends they are can be family so when we share our goals we talk about it we get inputs that enthusiasm is double the motivation to continue to uh, you know uh, be able to do it it really kind of helps and the people in our lives then are actually resources they can also have you tried that why don't you try that this is what worked for me why don't you look at it so look around you by looking around you you will always find people who inspire you and that inspiration in the form of either a role model with whom you can communicate or interact would be wonderful. If not, you can still understand from their life stories, from their interviews, what worked for them, how did they make it work for them, what is it that you, you are likely to uh, you know, kind of pay more attention to what they are saying. You will find people around you who support you. And in making you feel happy about yourself, you can share because we are looking at, we are going to come against challenges or barriers in what you wish to attain. So having a team of people, having that tribe, if I may use the word, is really going to keep you strengthened and keep giving you the energy. So even if you complete or fulfill one small step, which could be you needed to write emails maybe. So you just wrote one email today just before you slept. That's a step. So at least one action not necessarily be so vast in scope where you feel that you're not doing much about it. But every little action that you take. So you didn't walk four kilometers in a day, but yes, if you walked one kilometer, it's fine. You allow yourself that kind of flexibility. So establishing a support system also allows us to, not only as having a social resource, it also allows us to celebrate together. It allows us to share. It allows us to give one another safe spaces. Having safe spaces are empowering just by the sheer nature of its availability. But, but we need to 
create those. So when we create these, I'm going to really discuss with you, uh, share with you two small nuggets. There are millions, thousands of women who continuously have contributed in ways which can really be our role models, who are our role models. We just recently uh, celebrated Women's Day. And we do know that from every field, there are women taking the glass ceiling. There are women who are not only metaphorically having wings and for their dreams to fly, they are soaring and they're touching the skies. There are women who, in spite of having every challenge possible, social at the social level, at the family level, at the psychological level, have been able to re renew, restore, and dig deep within themselves to be able to find something for them to continue. So what is that something which gave them that power? Why didn't they break down? Why aren't they really in a state of poor mental health? How come they continue to contribute towards the society and the nation at large in spite of those challenges? One such person who is extremely, I could say, an inspiration for each girl and every girl child in this country is old care. So she suffered from her childhood from this fragile bone disorder implying she had 16 bone fractures while growing up and six surgeries. So when you have bone fractures because of an inherent genetic disorder and the bones have to be fused again and again, it means naturally they don't grow to their optimum length. Then you're going to have stunted growth. You're going to have restricted movement of the skeletal system. So the implications are of this bone disorder that you are not really going to be a typical milestone achiever in terms of the physical development domain. And if by and you live in a family where there is impoverishment, living in a slum structure, and the parents of course want the girl not to study after class eight. So they are not only telling her to stop studying, they demand that she stop to study. And they in fact are so stringent about it that they say that if you are really not going to continue to study, you better leave our home. So it's basically disowning that child at young age who is still in class eight, who's dreaming, aspiring, and, in, and also, don't forget this, also coping on her daily living every hour, every minute with the pain, distress, trauma, and limitations of the bone disorder because it's not going away anytime soon. It's only in adolescent years by the time the bones become fused and strong enough that they break mess. So uh, what she did was over then actually she came to Delhi from her native village in Rajasthan and taking a small room on rent now she teaches children starting to teach. So she's in class eight so she teaches children who are younger to her and with that she earns a bit of her livelihood and by, she has an unfortunate accident in the subsequent years which confine her to a wheelchair but she is not the one to give up the fight it is her initiative it is her reservoir of the inner the willingness the courage if i may say the resilience that i may talk about that comes to the fore she digs deep again and again with a smile on her face that this is my dream i want to be able to attain it so for a college admission in university of delhi who would sign there is a uh, uh, you know where there's signatures required in the application forms the signature of a parent so who signs for her there? So fortunately, we see create your support system. It was Mrs. K uh, Dr. Kiran Bedi who agreed to come to the University College, Gargi College, and she agreed to sign for her and her admission took place. So there in the, in the college, she flourished by way of being part, active part of the societies, of the students' union leadership, of taking part 
in uh, essays, in debates, in poetry, and uh, emceeing functions and events. So nothing stopping her. And so what I'm saying is not only on only studying, which is so important, but also allowing herself to develop a personality in a holistic manner uh, by taking part in extracurriculars, in confidently being able to take public speaking and uh, um, being mentored by teachers in terms of opportunities that could allow her to do all that. So once in 2013, she has a fellowship and by 2016, as you can see, she is our very own ICE officer and now serving the country. So now when we start looking at uh, ovals, we can go back and think of the SMART goals of being specific, having a specific goal of education, of measuring it, that I need an undergraduate degree. I'm not stopping at class eight because that will not allow me to uh, you know, be a part of the Indian administrative services, to, be, to taking an action. So no economic resources, taking tuitions and getting those resources. So when we start again, when we had those uh, smart goals, we did it make it so relevant? So the education degree that she has, and of course the time bound implied to be able to enter the academy with enough chances where the minimum age allows her to be able to be eligible enough and she made it. Uh, one more I want to talk about is, uh, so somebody who is now on the other continuum of Umul, Umul has a de deprived, uh, de uh, you know, development terms of the bone disorder, deprived familial support, a deprived love and nurturance from within the family, and she has uh, now been, so she we see an empowerment in terms of right from the early on age and now making a difference. Aditi in terms of even uh, being at NIB graduate and being at Aditi, what who is a social entrepreneur. So what she remembered was that as a girl in class 12, when she started to enter her puberty years, puberty years, there was nobody to talk to her. There was fear, anxiety. What is the menstrual cycle about? What does it mean for me? Uh, am I, why am I looking or appearing different? Who should she reach out to ask for questions? And the answers she found were much later on in her older years, through her friends and through her teachers. She didn't forget that. So what she did was on completing her education, on she wanted to be an entrepreneur and starting. So what did she do? Uh, how would she uh, change the myths? How, what would, could she do to reach out to, you know, uh, young girls or to families, to taboos and stigmas? How, what could she do? So through, she talked to doctors, what is the relevant knowledge? She made storybooks. She had animated characters, a doctor, and a few girls and to ask questions, were answering questions and through animation, through scripted understandings to whom girls could relate to. So tales of change uh, dot in and uh, the platform really becomes, I mean, if you see and you go to the website, there have been thousands and thousands and millions of questions, interactions and girls who have become more aware, more respectful of themselves because of uh, letting go of anxieties and fears of who they are. So basically, being in, uh, in the Indian context, we are culturally, uh, you know, it has to be pragmatic in certain ways. So using of both digital media, using both of community outreach programs. So why is she empowered? She is empowered because she's reaching out to other women, to other girls. And she is in fact empowering them. So why I have taken this as one of the smile, you know, along with Umul, is there are so many aspects of our daily lives as women that is not talked about. It could be sexuality, it could be to, to do with our gender identity, it could be very many things where, which are still closeted in terms of even within a family we do not find the safe space or the comfort to be able to express affairs and the deep-rooted stigmas are not going to go away in 
just by constitutional rights and freedom, but yes, the laws and the policies, once they begin to change, we can actually allow those to be implemented more efficaciously if we become the spokesperson or if we become the advocate through such examples as Aditi's. So these two uh, actually have, I hope the case studies show us this, that challenges can be overcome, barriers will be faced, but the initiative is that we continue to take steps towards personal empowerment and for us to be able to stay committed to any goal that we might have at any age. So you have women uh, you know, at getting their PhD degrees at the age of 70, learning to read and write in Vrindavan Ashram, we know women who have been illiterate throughout their lives, now learning to write in their at older adulthood years. Women in Kerala that we've under seen there completing law, doing martial arts and teaching other. So it is, a, uh, so it's not that I'm just talking to a certain age group, we're talking to us in terms of at age no bar because we need to be able to become more awareness uh, that is what kind of knowledge what am i learning what information do i need whom do i seek that information from because the more self-efficacious we are the more beliefs that we develop the more positivity that we experience in ourselves the fulfillment is so rewarding and we know that like for example that nobody can make us feel inferior without our consent so yes consent is something that we are not going to give no saying no is a complete sentence and when we say this, when I agree, when I'm aware that I have a choice to choose or to say no, I am powered. I would like you to take away the term from here as one thing maybe from this short talk of mine or long talk of mine that I am powered. Like our devices, the battery that needs continuously to be charged, we shall continue to be charging ourselves to move ahead. We're going to fail, there are going to be barriers, but to be becoming, from just to being, to becoming, to doing, I want to be able to give myself the permission also that yes, I may have invested my time or money and it did not come too much, but I can learn from that experience. It tells me the don'ts. So if I join a certain course, so I had a student come up to me and say that my parents have paid up 60,000 rupees for, uh, for to prepare for the CAT exam, but my heart, my mind, my soul is just not into it. Now, what do I do about it? So the whole, she says, I will fail. And then my parents will cut a sorry figure or I would have wasted their money. So visualizing and feeling despondent on that eventuality, what can be the other way of dealing with it? To having a frank communication, you know, the parents are open to listening to their um, child's voice and the child being able to communicate, maybe sometimes through a teacher, through an older sibling, that uh, if also it's okay. So they say, no, but there is not much scope. She wanted to learn dance and continue with her Bharat Natyam. So they said, there's no chance, there's no scope. But she says, all right, if I cannot make much of it, at least I would have known that I have tried. And there would be some wisdom even from there. So managing your time, give yourself every day at least a few moments which you really enjoy be it a casual a slow cup of tea or many of us as adults or children also lead rushed lives the pandemic has made us more uh, you could you know this uh, kind of uh, allow has allowed us fewer opportunities to be with other people to be to be doing other things there will always be enough time. There will be time. So that one year should not be looked at as wasted time, but as a time where the world needed to just pause to take this. And we know that from our pictures and videos, how nature flourished 
in its uh, you know in give it being allowed by man and not being interfered so managing your time so it's all right it's okay to step back a bit and to be able to say no without guilt because we do know uh, as women we reach our way very very few of us would probably say no i'm tired i can't make a meal for you today or i can't pack lunches or i don't uh, feel like attending a lecture if i'm a student so we have but because by saying one yes we are saying a no to many other things so by saying uh, yes uh, because the feelings or the person needs a favor and we think of that the person will feel hurt we are saying no to other things which will probably be put aside because we need to do that favor so the balancing of our yeses and nos be very very mindful because they are empowering because saying one no can give us a lot of yeses from what gives us happiness and in doing these things in these points we are basically being self compassionate loving ourselves allowing our bodies to rest to uh, nurture them through adequate nutrition through exercising through dreaming through aspiring through wanting to reach out we should always always prioritize self care routine so self care routine is not only about an a spa appointment nothing wrong with that it could also be something that you really uh, you know owe it to yourself which is soulful which is uplifting for you it could be a long chat with a friend it could be a visit to a some park and meet with people it could be sitting and finishing a painting that you so long wanted to actually draw so remember everyone that i am powered is something which is feasible doable attainable achievable and extremely rewarding so coming towards almost the end of uh, what i would like to bring it together how am i looking at my life ahead in terms of milestones which are actually going to be meaningful ikigai as the japanese call it we need to start today at this moment whatever our age whatever our situation what is it that inherently uh, is something which will really really give you a sense of meaningful life and give you that sense of i did it or i can do it so when we say it we i'll do it when my children grow up or i'll do it when my i retire or i'll do it once now uh, uh, my these responsibilities are over we can of course think like that but things may change during that time for that point in time and we might then look back at today as a regretful time even though we know that it's never too late but why not even use our tomorrows in terms of making our uh, ensuring that our uh, you know today's uh, by ensuring that the tomorrow is also a good today so rather than thinking of tomorrow as tomorrow we think of today and then tomorrow as today so all the todays lined up it's today 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 so we can name it as a wednesday thursday friday but tomorrow is an ambiguous term that we rather probably uh, use less in our dictionary so every little step that you have taken even starting to aspire to think that yes i'm definitely going to be able to take the initiative uh, and to uh, reward my mental health for with it i really going to have to celebrate that yes you can do it you will do it so i want us all to be as women self propelled and to and have our own and for the tribe of women to be able to create those spaces and opportunities where we celebrate one another in more ways than one but it's all going to start with one thing and importantly which is to being friends with oneself self compassion uh and being able to experience the highs and lows of life in in of daily life by in a kind of that inertia the momentum that yes this is i am riding the waves as we go along i hope this is 
not much to be looking at in terms of 2021 i have put it in green we're giving it a green light we were in red light last year i would say that this is probably the yellow phase we are still in the midst of this uh, pandemic but to allowing us the time that very soon like today and then tomorrow wala like today that this is what will i shall be continuing to do so i would say a very warm thank you a very big thank you for the generosity of you to be sharing your time in listening to me for to the privilege of me for my opportunity to be able to have this conversation with you whoever is listening to me i would urge you that i would love to continue this meaningful i know it i would love to talk to each one of you to be able to get your comments your thoughts your feedback your suggestions do contact or email me my email id is there let me know of little nuggets of what made you empowered what has been your past young life the few past few years been like what is it that you are visualizing yourself in terms of empowering i am powered have you experienced this empowerment please share with me write to me that what has what did it make you feel and what do you plan to do about it because i am with you may my energy my positivity the little words the small words that i share with you today give you the vibe give you the energy as i I'll say my thank you once again and wish you my very best i look forward to hearing from you by ending with my salute and salutations to all the women to all the great women from centuries and to the present who have inspired us who will continue to keep us going we are one of their tribe and i say my three cheers to their health and to ours Thank you so much. Thank you very much.